Um, hi, I'm Xu Pengling. Uh, you can call me, also call me Nicholas. I'm from the Ethereum Foundation. Um, today I'll be talking about weak subjectivity and how the thinking protocol works in E2. Um, so uh, this talk consists of three parts, weak subjectivity and E2 sync, and I'll let, um, finally I'll make a brief introduction on the four choice rule used in E2 right now. So first, um, I'll talk about what subjectivity means in this context and why is it weak. So uh, what is objectivity means in this context? So objectivity in this context could be, for example, like proof of work, uh, you know, how much work done, how much electricity spent. And so a node uh, joining the Bitcoin or Ethereum network knows that it, uh, it can request proof of work from any peers and then he can use this proof of work to objectively identify the canonical chain. But uh, in proof of state, the work could be like running state transition, creating, verifying signatures, but this work are tiny compared to proof of work. So every validator can create super long fork chains uh, secretly at any time. And so this enables the, the long range attack. So basically in a uh, long range attack, for example, uh, say if is an attacker, and he first requests a withdrawal on the main chain, and after some time his withdrawal is uh, successfully processed. Now he, uh, uh, she has no stake on the main chain. And later Alice goes online, and now Eve can create a, a fork chain, and on that chain she did not withdraw, uh, withdraw and con continues to vote on the fork chain. And now uh, Eve can feed this fork chain to Alice, and later. Uh, when Alice find out that Eve has been feeding her with the uh, four chains, uh, she would try to use this four chain as a proof to prove that Eve was double voting. And uh, she would send this uh, evidence to the main chain, but then she would find out that Eve no longer has any stake on the, on the main chain. So uh, subjectivity uh, in this context uh, means that you need to trust some sources to identify the canonical chain. And why is it weak? Uh, it's weak because we only need to trust when first you join, join the network for the first time, or second, you were offline for a long time. Uh, for how long? It depends on how long it takes for the, the, the attacker to withdraw their stake. And this is called the weak subjectivity period and which subjectivity period is going to determine uh, if we're gonna need trust when we are thinking. So next, uh, I will talk about how the thinking protocol works in E2. Um, I will walk through uh, uh, how the client sync in three different situations. And the first is how the client sync when you bootstrap your node the first time. And the second one is when you goes offline and logging back uh, before the weak subjectivity period ends. Uh, the third situation is when you stay offline for too long, for longer than with subjectivity period. Okay, um, first, how does the client seek when bootstrap your node the first time? You need to trust. Uh, you trust the bootstrap nodes, you trust the genesis blocks, genesis state, or if the genesis is already way back in the past, you will trust a uh, uh, latest, latest checkpoint instead. So uh, say if now you have a trusted genesis or latest checkpoint, uh, you will connect to peers and you will first exchange uh, latest checkpoint and head blocks and some other infos to decide if you are you two are on the same chain. And if you are, then you will start request the missing blocks. Or if you are not on the same chain, you will simply disconnect. So uh, second situation, uh, how does client sync when you go offline but uh, logging back in time? Uh, first, you still need to trust. You trust you trust the bootstrap um, nodes, or maybe you can use the peer info you persist in the database uh, during that connection. But now you do not need to trust the latest checkpoint because you can use the checkpoint the last time you were online and start thinking from there. Okay. Um, it's mostly the same. You have the checkpoint and you connect to peers and you start exchanging uh, latest trade point, head block, and some other informations to decide if you're on the same chain, and if you are, you request missing blocks. Uh, but note that the client will only support requesting blocks since the start of the weak subjectivity period, uh, which means that you won't be able to sync the blocks that's older than the start of the weak subjectivity period. 
Okay, uh, and if you are not on the same same chain, you will uh, the peer will notify us, and then we will disconnect. Okay, um, third situation, um, how does client think when uh, you stay offline for longer than we subjective subjectivity period? So it's basically the same as when you were. Uh, as the way you think when you boost your node the first time. Uh, you trust uh, Genesis block or tr you trust the uh, latest trade point and start thinking from there. Okay, once we done, one, once we finish the thinking, we will have a picture of how the chain or how the block tree looks like. And then we'll apply the fortress rule to get a score of each chain. And then we can identify the canonical chain. So before I get to the fortress rule, um, there's uh, two, type of, two types of trade points. Um, first one is finalized trade point. The second one is justified trade point. And we do not override the finalized trade point unless uh, there's an attack. But in that case, we can know for sure that at least um, a one third of the validating ease will be burned. So that type of here. And for finalized, uh, for justified trade point, uh, it can be override. It can be overridden, and we will uh, choose. We will switch to the more recent justified trade point. Okay. Um, so after justified trade point is decided, we will apply the four choice rule on different four chains, and the score counting starts from justified trade point. But here we cannot use uh, longest chain rule because, uh, as I previously mentioned. Uh, the attacker can secret, secretly create super long four chains anytime. So, uh, what four choice rule do we use? Uh, we use element, element D ghost, uh, stands for latest message driven ghost. Uh, ghost stands for greedy, heavy, observe, subtree. Okay, um, how does the ghost four choice rule work? Um, say we have different four chains here, and the Y square is the block. And the green circle is the uh, the attestation. The attestation is the validator, the vote casted by the validator. Uh, the validator would vote for the block that they think is the head block of the canonical chain at that time. So we have the votes, and then we will do the score count. The score of a block is the sum of the score of all his child blocks. And once we have the score count, we will start from justified track point and goes all the way down to the head block. And in each step, each in, in each step, uh, when there's a fork, we choose the one with higher score. And so in ghost fortress rule, we will have the chain on the top as the winning chain, as the chain with higher, highest score. Okay, next, how, how does the element D goes works? Um, the post by Lair X Research summarized pretty well. Uh, you don't care pass votes whose sender might not receive other messages due to the network latency. Uh, in short, it means that we only count the validator's latest vote. So now uh, say there are six validators and these are the votes they cast. And since in element D goes, we only uh, count the validators' latest vote. So this will uh, what the is, this will be what the vote count like. And so we will get a different score count and apply the same um, rule, uh, same choosing rule. We will have now we will have the uh, chain on, on the bottom as the winning chain. And now I want to briefly uh, mention the optimization on LMD Ghost. Uh, the idea of the uh, optimization is basically that when we run in a full choice rule, uh, we skip the blocks that no validators vote for. And so this will save us time and memory when uh, traversing the block tree back and forth. Okay, there's one thing worth mentioning is that uh, we're seeing blocks but not the att attestations. So we wait for attestation to be propagated to us. Uh, uh, it can come in as a form of single attestation, aggregated attestations, or attestations that are included in the blocks. And we take all three kinds of attestation into account when uh, in our full choice rule. But since we do not think the attestation 
And that means every node could uh, receive different attestation at different time. Uh, so every node could have different view. They have different. They could have different vote count for each four chains. So this creates uh, a window for the attacker. The attacker can withhold attestation and broadcast them at once to make a victim switch between different chains repeatedly. But uh, there's a, a prerequisite for this attack is that there has to be a temporary network failure. And one attack is called decoy flip-flop attack. And re you can read more about it on the re ETH research forum. And one possible mitigation is the recent Propose, recently proposed a uh, variant of ghost is called fresh message driven ghost. And in short, is basically that we do not accept attestation too long ago. Uh, for example, we do not accept attestation from maybe two weeks ago. And okay, that's my introduction on weak subjectivity, ETH to sync and Fortress rule today. Thank you.